Now we're going to look at finite sums and uh, some formulas for these. These are special finite sums. So the first one we have, you do not need to memorize these. I'll put them on a cheat sheet. So do not memorize. Of course, you can always memorize anything you want, but uh, you don't have to memorize these. All right, so we'll start with a relatively easy one. So what happens if you add up? And I think we're using the letter N, so I'll keep it. Now on these, I am going to go from uh, 1 to big N. They're a little easier. You know what? I taught all the rest from 0 to N. We'll do this from 0 to N. All right, so we're going to add up a bunch of Cs. How many are we adding together? I'm going to be careful. It looks like it's N, but because we started 0, it's going to be big N plus 1. So you add up C plus C plus C, it'll be C times N plus 1. So that's our first special finite sum. Our next is a bit more complicated. This one could start at 0 uh, because the first term is 0. I'm going to write down what this actually adds up to, and then we're going to see why. So this one adds up to N, oh, and that should be capital N. All right, so why is this? Well, think about adding blocks that are increasing in size. So you got a height one, two, three, and however far you go. I'm just going to draw out what six would look like. So I'm going to draw the, the other three blocks here. So it's supposed to be height one, two, three, four, five, six. Now what I'm going to do is flip four, five, six upside down. I think I'll go one taller. It would look like that. So if we knew the area of the rectangle we just created, we would know the area, or we would know the total amount in all the blocks. So we're basically, basically using geometry here. So this would be three, and it looks like this would be six, but it's really six plus one. Okay, this is if we had an even number of blocks, well, what if we had an odd number of blocks? What would happen then? Let's look at uh, seven blocks. All right, so there are seven blocks and I did break the three off and the four off in that configuration. So what we're going to do is stack the 4 on top of the 3, but the way we're going to do it so it comes out nicely is like this. Ooh, there we go. And I'm not going to fill in all the intermediate lines, but I think you get the point, hopefully. The height, so this was 7 total. So our height would be seven and our width would now be three plus one. And it turns out either way, uh, you get the same uh, value. So if you think about the six plus one and three versus a seven and three plus one, you're basically averaging together n and n plus 1. Or think about it, whatever number is even, either n or n plus 1, you're cutting that one in half. And that's exactly what we did here. So here 6 is even. 
So what we're gonna do is have a width three and a height six plus one. Here seven is odd, so uh, we have, uh, we can't cut it in half. So we have a height seven and a width of half, or well, not quite half, but um, three plus one, half plus one. All right, so there's our formula. There are some other formulas out there. Uh, there's two more, these are more algebra rules. So those you don't need to memorize. Uh, I'll show you, there's a few more for homework problems you might need, uh, but I wanna keep it a little bit simple for your, uh, for your final exam. So here are some algebra rules for finite sums. So if we have a constant times a n, and it doesn't even matter about the endpoints, but what you can do is factor this out. So this is C, C A zero plus C, geez, I really want to write in alphabetical order. C A one, C A two, C A N, can. All right, obviously we can factor the C out. And written in summation notation, this looks like C summation. So you can factor, this is what I call factoring, out a constant. Factor out the constant. And the last rule that'll be helpful You can split up a summation like this. Uh, this is only gonna work on finite sums. So if you've seen any uh, weird math logic where it looks like a sum, an infinite sum is adding up to something negative when it's always positive, uh, they probably change the order around which you are only allowed to do if you have a finite number of terms. Now, why do I say change the order around? Hey, look, the A's are before the B's. Mm, not really, because the first term will be A0, B0. A0 plus B0 plus A1 plus B1 plus, so it goes A, B, A, B, A, B, but on the right, side you get all the A's before any of the B's. So that's what I mean by reordering. You can reorder uh, in the finite case. The infinite case is a little more tricky and you have to wait until calculus two for that. Now we're going to go and uh, use these and find some sums. <clears throat> uh, I want to find sums. So summation 3n for n equals 1 to 16. <clears throat> so we got a finite sum. It's good. All of our rules for finite sums. We don't quite have this. What we have is 3n, which we can't just write a 3 on top of that. So what we're going to do is use that. But we're also going to use this factoring property right here. So let's look at that factoring property first. So we're gonna factor out the constant. Every term has a times three times three times three. So factoring in summation notation looks like this. It's a little weird because it looks like the three jumps through the summation. It does, but it jumps through because of this factoring right here. So I wrote out all the factoring happening. This is exactly what we just did, where C is the number three. Now we use that first rule, which is 
n times n plus 1 over 2. That's what's going in here. So it's 16 times 16 plus 1 over 2. And 16 over 2 is 8. Uh, 16 plus 1 is 17. And I'm not good at multiplication, but, well, 3 times 8. Hopefully that's 24. Whatever this product is, is that sum right there. I could write out the terms. There are 16 terms. It would not be too hard to write out all the terms and add them together, but this is going to be way faster as soon as that number gets much bigger than 16. That's our first sum. Our second sum. Let's go i equals Let's get crazy. Okay. Well, this one's weird. We have a i minus 3. So we're going to do, we don't have anything to factor, but we're going to reorder. And we're using the second property here. So what I'm going to do is basically break this apart. There's a negative sign, so we got to keep that there. And if you want, you could parenthesize these to keep them together. I would use parentheses, but I don't think they would fit in this case. Uh, so if you want to group them together, feel free to put some extra parentheses or brackets in here. So this is pretty much what we had last time, where we used the n times n plus 1 over 2. So we're going to use that again. Uh, we do have one slight problem. We're not starting at positive 1. So we better deal with that. So let's take some extra space over here. I'm just going to rewrite just the first sum. So one thing you do is write out the first few terms, minus 1, and then plus 0, plus 1, plus 2, plus 20. So what I can do, these terms right here, I'll write as, and I don't really care about the zero, it's zero, it's not going to contribute at all. So what I call, I call this, uh, you're basically breaking off the first, usually you only have to do one or two or three terms, but you're going to break off the first few terms. Uh, may just be one. Sometimes you might need to break off five or six terms. And what that does, it lets you start your index at a different number. So I saw that it was in negative value, so what I did is I just uh, wrote it out like that. Uh, there are other ways to deal with this, but I think it's probably one of the most uh, straightforward, easiest ways. Now I don't have much room. Negative 1 plus summation. All right, what do we do here? Well, we're adding a bunch of 3s together. How many 3s are we adding together? Not quite 20. We're not even starting at 0. We're starting way back at negative 1. So I have negative 1, and then 0, and then 20 more. So it's really going to be 22 total. So again, we get from 1 to 20, we get 20, but there's two more before we even get to 1. So we got 22. And now we're just going to use that formula, n times n plus 1 over 2. So 20 times 21 over 2 minus 3 times 22 is 66. All right, 20 over 2 is 10. Negative 67 plus 210 is something. 
Ah, that's good enough. We'll leave it there. All right, so we just used uh, both the algebra rules and both of the special finite sums. Now for some of the homeworks, there are some more special finite sums. I don't want you to, uh, work, I won't put them on the final exam, but I do want you to be aware of them. So I just Googled a series and then uh, went obviously to mathematical series. You can read about uh, other series if you want, but we're just going to the math. Uh, this is about infinite sums. Oh, wow, that worked well. This is about infinite sums. For finite sums, see summation. Nice. Summations, so we'll go there. Finite sums. Oh, that one's familiar. So that's the uh, sum that we just looked at. And I think we'll look at special somewhere uh, that's a lot of scary looking math here identities i think that's what no yeah these are algebra rules that we saw they're written out a little more and uh there's a lot more algebra rules than i showed you don't multiply series that's that's what all these are telling you to not do if you multiply series it's very difficult all right polynomial expressions here we go this is what i wanted to show you so we got the uh the one that we saw, which is right here. I'll try to circle it, there we go. Uh, but below it is where I want you to look, i squared, i cubed. Some of the homework problems might use i squared, i cubed, which are on the screen right now, but I don't wanna put them in the notes uh, because I don't want you to worry about them on the final exam. So we have one more to look at, which is the geometric series. While I'm here, I want to see, I think they'll probably talk about it here. Nope. All right. We'll go look. Uh, we'll just go off the definition then. 